if they believe like what the Bible said, they will have an understanding that this right here is not Christ. Right. That image right here is a better description of Christ. That's right. Though it's not the real image, but it's a better description. You understand that, brother? Because this Bible is for you as well, bro. Right. What our people got to understand is that there's no difference between, though we might come in different shades of color, we're all the same people. The Israelites, the Blacks, right. Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. right. They try to make a difference between us, but there's none. Give me Isaiah 55 and 30. Is that what I want? 30 and 50? Isaiah? It says Judah and Israel. Get that, Jeremiah. Read. Because look, though we think that we're a different race, Blacks and Hispanics, where do we always end up living together? In the ghetto, right? Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50 and verse 33. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah. So that's the blacks and Hispanics. Israel and Judah. That's the blacks and Hispanics today. Read. We're oppressed together. So you see that? We were oppressed together. Because look, we can gun down at a high rate. Not just the blacks. But so Hispanics and Native Americans as well. Probably them at a higher rate, but it's not televised. You understand? So we have to come to the understanding that we are the people of the book. Right. And we gotta shut down this division that's between us. We are the same people. Right. You understand that, Tony? So this is what the message of God right here. That we gotta come back, keep God's laws, and get the kingdom. Live forever. Not what they say in the Christian church, because that's, like you said earlier, a bunch of nonsense. Right? So, in the Christian church, they don't teach the laws. Right? You agree? So, what are some of the laws that we should be teaching? Because that's, that's, that's key to your salvation. Right? So, let's bring out a law. Right? Deuteronomy. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So, Sister Tom, what item of clothing women wear today that they shouldn't be wearing that belongs to men? True. Pants? Exactly. Now, read on. We're going to read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What do you see today in, in the media? What do men always say? What do you catch men wearing? Dresses. That's out of order. That's out of order. That's confusion. Men shouldn't be wearing dresses. Women shouldn't be wearing pants. Yeah, I'm going to show you the problem behind it. There's a spirit behind it. Right? When women put on pants, what do they normally do? What do they normally do? What? They like to show off their body. They show off their curves. Right? They got. They try to. They got to find the tightest fitting pants possible. Right? That's not according to the Bible. That's right. not modest. Give me Timothy. First Timothy two and nine. Because the Bible says that women ought to dress modestly, so that men wouldn't think of you any other way. They wouldn't come at you a certain way. They'll come at you with respect. See how God's laws benefit our people? It wouldn't be any more, It wouldn't be any harm going around, right? Read that for my sister. The book of First Timothy, chapter two and verse nine. In like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. In modest apparel. Modest apparel. Doesn't mean you have to dress like a grandma. Just cover your body. That's what God said. So, this is the reason why. Give me Leviticus. Because the women are supposed to be dressing modest, right? Not showing their bodies, not showing their curves. Get that in Leviticus 19. Is it 29? Yes. Because that spirit, it, it has consequences. Read. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. So, when you see mothers dressing their daughters up and trying to have them all older than what they're supposed to be, that's a form of prostituting your daughter. Because now what? You got sickos out here looking at these little girls. You see the effects behind breaking God's laws? That's the effect. So if they were learning to dress modestly as a young age, men wouldn't be looking at them like that. Right? Read. 
and the land become full of wickedness. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land go to order. So, that's what happens. You got a lot of girls out here giving away their bodies. They're not supposed to be doing that. You understand? Because the Bible says to what? You know what we're doing? Huh? The entire activity. Just modestly, modestly. So, these are God's commandments. So, well, we ain't read them all, but that's just a few so you get an idea of what's going on. These are the things that all people should be applying to their lives. Because the Christian church, have you ever read that in the church? No. What pastor likes to do? He likes to have all the girls and the soldiers sit right up front, right? So that he can look at them. That's evil. That's evil. That's causing the land to be filled with whoredom, wickedness. Right? You understand? So, you got the flood? Okay, you do it all here? Look, sis, we got the church out here. You more than welcome to come. Wear a dress. Bring your family. We are here to teach our people. Because that's what we are here for. We're not out here for everybody else. We are here for our people specifically. Because who's at the bottom? We are. Does everybody need to be saved? Who needs to be saved? All people. That's and right. The Israelites. Not everybody. Because I'm going to ask you this, sis. In a Christian church, right? They say Christ is for who? For everybody. But what does the Bible say? Let's find out. Matthew 15 and verse 24. Because we're going to show you. They don't show you this in the Bible, in the, in the church. They show you, oh, who holler and scream and pass the plate around 15 times, get your money. Wait. But we don't have a plate out here. We're just out here to teach you who you are, thus said the Lord, and how to keep God's laws. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, Sister Tony, does that say everybody in that right there? Who did he come for? For the Israelites, which you are. Right. What's your nationality? Yeah, what's your nationality? What do you go by today? Is it funny? Isn't it funny that our nationality changes every so often? We go from Negro to Black to African American, Afro American. There's something to that, right? Keep us confused. Keep us confused. That's a curse in the Bible. I'm going to show you that real quick. So, now that, do you understand that what? Christ came for who? Which you are. So, he came and died for you. So, we said that, you, you said your nationality is black, or whatever, it changes every so often. Give me Deuteronomy, you got that? Yeah. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 37. And that shall become an astonishment, a proverb. So, sis, what's a proverb? What's a proverb? He said that we are gonna become an astonishment and a proverb, a proverb so it says that we are going to be a proverb, right? A proverb is a wise saying. What do they say about blacks and Hispanics? Yeah, I mean, I mean, people, people know they said the other back anyway. What do they call us? Dumb niggas. Do you want to hide anything from the black person? Put it in the book, right? Uh, So-called Hispanics, they have a whole bunch of babies that lazy. They don't want to work. It's funny how they all call us lazy after we came out of slavery. Right? When we was working for free, it was all good. But now that we are so-called free, now we lazy. Right. Free? And a byword. And a byword. What's a byword? Being called black is a byword. Because what does God call you? Israelite. God calls you Israel. Not black, not Hispanic. Not Native American, none of that. He calls you Israel. So, back to the point where we were before. Your nationality is yeah. what? Yeah. Israel. Yeah. Right, so you see that sign right there? 
there. The 12 tribes of Israel, right? What is your father descend from? What is your father who's descended from? Yes. Right, right? African American, right? So, you will be from the tribe of Judah, right? That's your tribe. There's 12 tribes in the nation of Israel, right? And you are from the tribe of Judah. That's right. That's you. That's your lineage. The same blood coursing through your veins, the same blood that went through Christ's veins. Because he's from the tribe of Judah. You're a descendant of Christ. You're related to him, right? It's only by blood, not by spirit, by blood. So, Back to where we were. This is the matter. Christ only came for who? The Israelites, right? So, he said that he only came but to the lost sheep. Who's lost? Uh, all people. Why? Because we don't know who we are. Our nationality changes every so often. We only accept what they give us. Just like the slave master. They gave us whatever and we accepted. Now, read that again. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Of the house of Israel. Now, give me Acts 5 and 30. Look, if the Bible's redundant. It's going to repeat itself over and over and over. But what do they do in the Christian church? They don't read anything. That's why our people don't know what to do. They don't know what's required of them. They don't know that Christ only came for them and not everybody. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. So it says the God of our fathers. Our fathers, a possessive word right there, right? It didn't say the God of everybody. It said the God of our fathers, the Israelites, That's the right. blacks and the Spanish. Read. Whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. That's so right. he only died to give repentance to Israel. Nobody else. Nobody else. So sis, you have to understand that how special you are. You gotta understand that. You're not just some nigga in the world. Not what they call you, because that's what they call us. We niggas, we ain't nothing. But the Bible says what? We are somebody. That's right. Christ came for us, right? Now, you got any, you got any questions so far? Huh? All right, so, huh? Oh, you got applauses? Oh, okay, go ahead. But make sure you check out that flower since we're out here every Friday night, and we also have a school on, on Sahara. That's just right on the corner, right? Sahara and this one is the Eastern and Maryland. Yep, come down to business, all right? So we are here teaching our... We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.